Hey folks, I'm Red Monster SC, and in this video, we're going to cover the Argo Mole, a multi crew mining vehicle, and the different mining lasers and modules that I recommend, as well as where you should be looking for mineable ores. So stick around to learn everything you need to know about mining in a mole. I've broken the video timeline up into chapters, so check the description for specific timestamps or hover over the progress bar to skip ahead. So let's get started. The Argo Mole is a multi-crew mining ship that can be operated by a crew of between one and five players, with an optimal crew of four. There are seats for a pilot, three laser operators, and the optional co-pilot. The Mole has 96 SCU of cargo space and a length of 45 meters. The vehicle interior is roomy and nicely detailed, including a full crew mess, crew quarters, wash closet, and engineering deck. The default loadout includes three size 2 Arbor mining lasers and a pair of size 2 laser repeaters for self-defense. The mole can be purchased at New Deal in Lorville for just over 5.1 million UEC, and you can also get it on the Pledge Store for 315 US dollars. Don't forget to use my referral code in the description below if you're creating a new account. I have a few recommended mining laser setups for the mole, and because you have three lasers to outfit, it's up to you how you'd like to mix and match them. I'll be reviewing each of the available mining modules and laser heads in a later video, so go check that out if you're looking to come up with your own unique loadout. For recommended mining lasers, I would go with three Lancet MH2 lasers for the huge reduction in instability you can get when combining multiple lasers, as well as the boost to the optimal charge window. If you're one of those brave people who wants to run the mole solo, I would switch one of those lasers to the Helix Mining Head for the added power. There are four module combinations I'd recommend trying. These can be mixed and matched as desired. The first and most useful combination I've found is a filter combo using a set of three FLTR-XL passive modules. Each one filters out 20% of extracted inert materials while reducing the collection rate by 30%. These numbers stack multiplicatively, so you'll end up filtering out just under half of the inert materials you extract, while slowing the extraction rates to about a third of normal. The laser operator on the filter setup should prioritize extracting fragments that have a high percentage mix of desired materials and inert materials. Because you're going to be collecting a lot of rocks with mixed material to fill up the mole, I'd consider this a must-have combination on one of your laser turrets. Next would be the emergency module combo, or the panic button, using one Rime active module and two Rieger C3 passive modules. The Rime module, when activated, will instantly cut a rock's charge level by 50%, allowing you to avoid catastrophe when an inexperienced or inattentive laser operator accidentally puts too much power into the rock. The bonus to the optimal window granted by the Rieger modules means that you'll have a larger optimal window to keep within, and the added resistance, while in most cases could be considered detrimental, would actually help prevent additional overcharging. I recommend having an experienced miner on this laser so they can quickly redirect to a rock when one of the other laser operators makes an emergency call out. Just point at the rock, turn on the laser, and activate the Rime module. Alternatively, you could use the Lifeline module instead of the Rime module, which reduces the charge rates and shatter damage by 90%. However, the Rime should allow you to avoid disaster in most cases. I'd keep one laser with this setup if you plan to show new players how to mine. Next is the Optimal Window combo, using a combination of the Optimum Active module and two Rieger C3 modules. When activated, the optimum module increases the size of the optimal charge window by 75%, with the additional 10% bonus from each of the Rieger modules. With stacking bonuses, you should see the optimal charge window more than double in size. This laser outfitting is useful if you have a rock with a significantly narrow optimal window, or if you just want an easier optimal window target to hit. And last is the extraction combo using a full set of three XTR-XL modules. Each module provides a 50% boost to the extraction rate, stacking for a ridiculous 338% of normal collection speed. 
The only practical application for this combo is if you're scooping up leftovers in a large group mining event and you don't care what material ends up being collected, or if the initial miners have eliminated all the non-valuable fragments. That's the only time I would try this combination, and even then, it's more of a joke than actual advice. With all that being said, these are my personal preferences based off of my own mining experience. If you have a different recommendation for mining heads or modules, let me know in the comments below. If you need help finding mineable ore deposits, check out the second video in this tutorial series where I cover how to locate mineable resources on planet surfaces or in asteroid belts, and explain what each of the numbers mean. You want to find a good location for high value ores, so take a look at the mineable ore prices and mineable ore locations tables presented here. If you want even more detailed information, consider joining my Discord server using the link below, or joining a mining organization on the RSI website, like the United Earth Mining Corporation, whose dedicated leadership team is always updating their mining intelligence archives with amazing levels of detail. For mole-specific surveying tips, the mole is capable of mining on any planet's surface, the yellow asteroid belt, any of the asteroid fields around the Lagrange points, and the air and halo and the three mining lasers are capable of fracturing any size rock you'll encounter. To decide whether a rock is going to have enough material to mine, this table shows what percentage concentration you'd need of a specific material in order to completely fill a prospector based on the rock's mass. In the mole, you'll need to look for three to four rocks with a high percentage of desired materials in order to fill up. And if you're mining quantanium, you'll want these rocks to be fairly close together or you'll risk running out of time before the rock wantanium explodes. I try to find rocks with at least 25% concentration of my desired materials to make them worth the effort of processing in the mole. It's rare to find multiple high percentage quantanium rocks together, making it difficult to fill a mole in one mining run, so I generally prefer a prospector for quantanium mining. That being said, Make sure your friends or surveyors know to give you a heads up if they come across a quantanium cluster with three or more rocks above 20%, and don't forget to send them a finder's fee because you're able to process it. Like and subscribe now if you're enjoying this video, and leave a comment if you notice anything that isn't clear or might have changed in future versions. Now it's time to start mining. Check my previous video on the actual process of mining, since it's going to work the same for any mining vehicle. In the Argo Mole, you control the mining lasers from one of three laser turrets. Enter the turret seed, then use your interaction mode to find the power on button, which powers on and activates the mining laser. This also defaults to mining mode. Mining in the mole will be very similar to the prospector, with the exception that you are now going to need to coordinate efforts between the pilot and up to three laser operators to navigate around the deposit, fracture the rock, and extract the resulting fragments. I recommend having all available laser turrets help with the first break. Having one laser operator take primary responsibility for power management, while the remaining laser operators, if any, apply a fixed power level between 10 and 20%. If multiple laser operators are trying to respond to a fluctuating charge level, it's very likely that someone will overcorrect and possibly overcharge the rock. After the first break, each laser operator can then start fracturing the subfragments until they are ready to extract. Fragments that have a yellow outline need to be fractured again before they can be extracted, and fragments with a purple outline are ready to be extracted. If any operator is having difficulty breaking a fragment, either because of a narrow optimal window or high instability, it's possible to fire at the fragment with additional mining lasers to help apply their bonuses. But be sure that the support lasers are firing at the lowest possible intensity level. Because the rock fragments will have slightly different compositions after breaking up the parent rock, it's possible that your desired materials could be concentrated in a single fragment, which is considered a good break or they could be dispersed in low percentages across multiple fragments, which is considered a bad break. Only break the fragments that contain your desired materials, and don't feel bad about skipping an extractable fragment if it has a lot of inert materials or a low percentage. It's also possible to strategically overcharge rocks that don't have any desirable materials in them, 
causing them to explode and clearing them out of the mining area. Although be sure to communicate with the rest of the crew when you're doing so, and give yourself a wide berth when the rock actually does explode to avoid damaging yourself. These overcharge explosions will also scatter the nearby fragments, but they should stop moving after a few seconds. Once you've gathered up all the fragments you want, you can keep mining or head back to the refinery if your cargo hold is full. If you are mining Quantanium, which is a volatile material, you'll have a limited amount of time to get the materials into the refinery. This timer starts when you collect your first bit of Quantanium and continues to count down regardless of whether any new material is added. For this reason, it's best to break down all the rocks you want to extract Quantanium from first before beginning the extraction process. A mole generally needs at least three rocks with a 25% Quantanium or better, but you may have a hard time finding enough suitable rocks that are relatively close together. Don't make the mistake of mining and extracting one partial load of Quantanium, and then attempt to mine more, as you'll quickly run the timer out on the volatile materials and end up destroying your ship. When it comes to Quantanium, it's a high risk, high reward activity with its own unique set of challenges. Fortunately, I've dedicated a full episode of this series just for Quantanium mining, so you should stick around and watch that. Now that you're back at the refinery with your mole full of raw ore, head to the refinement processing deck and choose how you want to handle it. You can either sell the raw ore as is, or refine the materials to be sold later. Refined materials sell for almost twice as much as the raw materials, but will also require you to transport and sell the materials at one of the main cities after the refining process is completed. Despite the added complexity, I recommend refining everything. If you're interested in learning about each of the refinery methods and why you might choose one over the other, there's a full episode covering everything related to the refineries in Star Citizen coming later in this series. For now, there are two refinery methods I recommend. First is the Dynex Solventation method for its high yield and low cost. It is the slowest method, so you could be waiting for a few days before it's ready to transport. The second is the Farron Exchange which is also a high yield, but costs about twice as much and usually finishes in under a day. You'll be able to see all your pending and completed refinery orders for this refinery at the terminal, and can transfer the completed orders to one of your cargo transport ships to sell later. If you don't have a cargo hauler, you can rent one downstairs inside the mining support center. Leaving your completed orders in the refinery queue won't have any negative impact except that the refinery orders could be lost during a major patch release. If you have refinery orders at multiple space stations, you'll need to travel to each refinery in order to collect them. For this reason, it's best to pick one refinery to act as a home base, rather than splitting your refining jobs across multiple locations. And also worth noting is that refined Quantanium will now be considered stable cargo, so you can take your time when storing and selling it. From here, it's up to you to transport your refined materials to one of the major landing zones, then navigate to the trade and development terminals where you can sell your cargo. Sales prices may fluctuate slightly based on specific demand for each location. However, they will all pay close enough to the same prices to be negligible. If you're looking for my recommendation of sales locations, I prefer Area 18 at ArcCorp based on the fact that you're already in the same area as the trade and development division when you wake up eliminating a potentially pesky train ride that's required at New Babbage or Lorville. And there you have it, everything you need to know about mining in the Argo Mole. Now get out there and mine some rocks, and don't forget to leave a comment below letting me know how you and your crew fared during your first few mining expeditions. Next up, we take an in-depth look at Quantanium mining to help you deal with its unique challenges in order to turn out maximum profits. If you've got questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below, and check the pinned comment on this video for any corrections or additional details. You can connect with me on Twitch, YouTube, Twitter, and Discord by following the links in the description. And last of all, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, because the world needs more likes. Spread those likes around, just get after it.